our actions are our future. What needs to be done to increase the resilience of our farmers? Taking us through that conversation is none other than the country manager, Agra, John Masharia. Thank you, sir, for your time. I think the first thing is to make available yield-enhancing technologies, seeds, fertilizers, and efficacious pesticides that um, you know, can first of all help them increase their yields. But currently we have seeds and, and, and other varieties that um, are disease-resistant, are drought-tolerant, uh, are early uh, maturing, and these are basically technologies that, if in the hands of farmers, they would be able to help them, you know, weather the effects of, of, of drought. But the second thing to say is that we also have financial technologies such as crop insurance that Agra has helped, uh, you know, introduce it to the country. That even in the face of drought, you would be able to get some form of rebate uh, that would allow you to afford, you know, seeds and fertilizers and provide some form of ease. Uh, in that uh, in that regard, but I believe the government is also doing efforts uh, from from um, um, from a, uh, you know a support or an easing uh, standpoint, and they are providing some form of uh, food relief together with other donors. They are providing some cash disbursements that are also helping people to be able to um, survive during these uh, difficult times. What are the low-hanging fruits in as far as technology and input? can we adopt to ensure that we remain food secure? The first um, uh, more obvious one, and it's also the difficult one to, to address, is actually to be able to structure markets in a way that uh, provides incentives for smallholder farmers to uh, grow different uh, varieties or different crops, but also take up newer uh, technologies. Because in any value chain, the market price is really the incentive that drives people to make agribusiness decisions and also drives the decision and choice of what to grow. That's number one. The second thing is to improve the adoption of, you know, uh, climate smart technologies. Uh, right now, I think in our estimation, that is still woefully low. Um, but if you begin to take up things like plant basins that we are seeing in Makueni, uh, if you begin to take up, you know, drought resistant uh, seeds, if you take uh, early maturing seeds, uh, things would begin to turn. The time right for us as Kenyans to change our dietary habits as well as diversify our food basket. It was time yesterday, not today. Uh, for a number of reasons, and I think, um, you know, the president, the minister have been on, uh, you know, telling the country to begin to diversify away from maize, because maize has also become a very political crop. Um, but also you have more nutritious crops like millet. You have soya bean, you have sorghum that you can actually take that are more, more, not only more nutritious, but actually offer smallholder farmers more income. The other important thing as you think about nutrition is the emergence of obesity as also a pandemic that is beginning to, to build. So uh, if we can get um, uh, the consumers to take up more healthier vegetables, your brandam, chicha, and things like that, things can actually be able to, to turn. What are your reflections ahead of the World Food Day? The average age of a farmer today is is anywhere between 65 and 75 years old. 30 years from now, that's not going to be the person putting your food on the table. So how do we bring the youth to be the farmer and to be the center of an agricultural transformation as we head into 2030, 2050. Uh, the second thing is to say that agriculture is the center of development. All the things we need to be doing and investing in, we need to be doing it to ensure that people are having access to food Food is affordable and food is uh, secure. Is, is, there's there's, there's a food safety. That is important because, you know, if you have a nutritious population, you reduce on your medical bills, but uh, new people who have good nutrients are also good learners. So if you think about your kids, you think about the hospitals, food really is at the center of all this. So how do we bring Ministry of Water, Ministry of Trade, Ministry of Roads, and quite a number of people to coordinate around uh, providing uh, food? The last thing is we need to... Uh, continue to implore African governments to increase their budgetary allocation towards agriculture and just get rid of this uh, disproportionate allocation of you know the funds going into agriculture vis-a-vis -vis the contribution of GDP uh, into agriculture. And the last thing is how do you take up technology? ICT 
is out there. We have AI, artificial intelligence technologies that are out there. How do we take them up and make them to come to bear for smallholder farmers? And how do we take them up to ensure that our value chains are more efficient, that they provide more market information, that they are used for better extension, um, you know, and things like that. As the world looks on to mark the World Food Day, remember, our actions are our future. I'm Regina Manyara. You're watching KBC Channel 1.